40 years ago, this was the approach road to the busiest airport in Cyprus. Nicosia International saw its last paying passengers in 1974. Now it stands stranded inside the UN buffer zone, empty and unused and trapped in time. This was how the terminal used to look. And this is that same space today. Hoardings still advertise long forgotten holidays, the passengers replaced by pigeons. Upstairs, what was once passport control, and along the balcony, what looks like the remains of an airport cafeteria. Built in 1968, this was the departure lounge in its heyday. Now those same seats stand empty, the gift shop and duty-free store long since closed to customers. Here patrolling this sector of the UN buffer zone are soldiers from one Scots battle group. They've been in Cyprus on UN peacekeeping duties since September, and among the troops are 39 reservists from 2nd Battalion, the Royal Irish Regiment. Some patrols you can go out on, you'll see absolutely nothing. The next patrol you can go out on can maybe be a fire, a uh, civilian incursion. Um, so there's a number of different possibilities, things that you can come across in, in patrols day to day. So um, I, I can understand what you mean, quite air it's worse at night. My dad served here um, in the artillery about, about 15 years ago. He told me a bit about it, but other than that, I'd never really heard of it. Um, I just thought, to, like, there's nothing here, it's just airy, quite dead. But um, you get, get, to, get used to the area and you know where to go at the back of your hand, really. The buffer zone stretches for more than 110 miles across the island, and Sector 2, which the British have patrolled since 1993, includes the centre of Nicosia. After being abandoned for more than 40 years, many of these buildings in the buffer zone are essentially derelict, but now there's a programme of works underway to try and stop them falling down and preserve them for future generations. The Nicosia Master Plan project was launched in 1980 as a collaboration between the Greek and Turkish Cypriot communities in Nicosia. One of its key aims is to conserve the architectural heritage of the buffer zone. The other battle facing this unique strip of land is Mother Nature. What was once a bustling city centre is now overgrown and helping keep it under control have been Royal Engineer sappers attached to One Scots. Negotiations to try and find a solution to the Cyprus problem have been going on since May and during a recent visit, US Secretary of State John Kerry said reunification is now within reach. Politicians from both sides are now meeting every month and one Scots have played their part in helping those talks take place. So um, at the moment there's a very high tempo of meetings between both the negotiators and the leaders, and we facilitate certainly the negotiators' meet meetings here in Ledra Palace. And so there, there are rooms set aside for them uh, to negotiate, and we provide you know, the bubble wrap around that to allow them to come in and, and do their discussions. But again, we're not actually involved in those discussions. We're very much supporting... Um, them to do that. So if this was the Oscars, for instance, the Oscar we're after is the best supporting actor rather than the best actor. But for now, those negotiations go on. In Nicosia's once bustling airport, the baggage carousel is empty. And in a far corner of the airfield, a solitary passenger plane, a Cyprus Airways Trident, still stands where its engines fell silent all those years ago. A potent symbol of the decades-long division, it's hoped may be drawing closer to an end. Simon Newton, Forces News, Nicosia.